I'm sitting here waiting on court. Um, there's a person on my screen, but I'm not gonna get called for a long time because before court, all the people that are in custody, custody, the people that are in jail, are um, wearing handcuffs for a very long time, so their shoulders end up hurting pretty bad. And before that, they're in a very confined space with eight other people from, from the jail that are actually from different units. So all the airborne um, virus potential is all kind of trapped in one spot. And then you go to a holding cell where they finally let you take off your cuffs, but there's one toilet there for like 30 people, 20 people. And then they put you back in cuffs so that you can go to court. And when you're in court, you're in cuffs but you have a face mask on. At least that's how it was for me. Um, so those people are probably gonna go first. I'm at home, I'll probably go last. So I have a long time to wait. Um, while I'm waiting, um, I thought I'd make a video talking about um, my concern about the court system right now and the problem of not being able to def defend yourself. Um, Cause now I have a public defender who I think is, I, I'm, I'm certain that they're on my side because I feel like this turned into a big deal. They're like, let's make sure he has someone that's on his side. and. Um, I'm going to do whatever the public defender says, and I'm not going to talk in court anymore. Um, I don't feel like the direct contempt of court was as direct as um, what direct contempt of court is supposed to be. Because my understanding is that direct contempt of court is like, you're not letting me do my job. You're not, you're not answering my questions. You're being, like, you're being constantly rude, and you're not doing, you're, not, you won't, you're refusing to plead guilty or not guilty or something. Like, that's like what I think contempt of court is generally. Um, my contempt of court was confusing. I didn't understand it. I spent 15 days in jail and it was that scary because it was so dangerous for me. I want to make multiple online education programs. And one of the online education programs is for people that want to represent themselves at court. And this is, it's like how to not get put in jail while being your own lawyer. And I came up with this idea before, um, before I got put in jail <laughs> and I thought I was doing a pretty good job of being a lawyer. I wasn't. Um, so my online education course would be, um, pretty cheap, but it would be about how to represent yourself in court without getting punished for it. Um, I also wanted to do an online education course for jails for, uh, when you go to jail, here's what you need to know about jail. You need to get commissary. You need to take care of this. You're not going to be able to get this. You're not going to be able to get this. If you, if you need pain medicine, put in the note right away, which I, I did try. Uh, the guard told me the wrong way to do it, so no one knew how to use the machine apparently. And then when I did put in the note, which was as fast as possible, um, it took it still took seven days for me to get pain medicine. It's like, it, the reason for this is because jails are trying so hard to keep drugs out, so they you can't have your family member drop off anything for you. Everything you get has to be bought through the jail. So it's like if you want two Tylenols, it's like a dollar seventy five. All right, so I want to make an online ed education course about jails. I want to make online, and, and when you go to jail, I, I think that online co course should be customized based on your jail so that you know about the gangs and stuff like that. So you kind of know the situation that you're in, like, watch out for this, don't do this. Like this has had, this has uh, resulted in bad things in the past. All right, so the third online education course that I've wanted to develop for a long time is a course for, um, middle school students about how to interact with the police. Because when I interact with the police, my hands are on the steering wheel, I wait for them to ask me and, and, then, and ask me for my license and registration and then I say, okay, it's in my glove box. And then I pull it out that way. Like my hands are visible to them. I have my hands on the steer steering wheel. I don't do anything else. I don't give the police any excuse to mess with me. Um, I tend to not argue with them. I tend to accept my guilt. I, I, the only time I've ever disagreed with a cop about me committing a crime was um, when I moved to Colorado Springs, this cop pulled me over because like I was looking at my phone to get directions and then the light turned green and I didn't see it. So I, I turned and then he said that I was speeding, but I was in traffic. But I don't know, I, I, felt, I felt like he was trying to harass me personally. And that's why I filed or I called the police department to file a harassment lawsuit. So I hope I, I, that's something I need to tell my public defender about. Um, I wasn't trying to file a harassment lawsuit. I was trying to file a complaint and I did. All right, so um, what else? I don't know. Those are my online education courses. I'm gonna go edit this while I'm waiting for court.